I'm Ahmad Rashad, and this is Real TV. It's a desperate drop, a fiery flop, and a frightening flick. Don't blink. We're bringing you 30 minutes of a shot you've got to see to believe. A mother tosses her own flesh and blood to safety. One guy's stupid stunt blows up in his face. A speed racer lights out at 150 miles an hour. This is where you see everyday people and extraordinary events. This is Real TV. And here's the man bringing you the world's best caught on tape, Ahmad Rajan. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. We're going to start out in a courtroom today. Usually, that's where differences of opinion get settled. But in this courtroom, the problems are just getting started. In Springfield, Massachusetts, a crowded courtroom sits silently as serial killer Alfred Gaynor is arraigned on two counts of murder. As to the complaint, Judge, there's been tested emotions. Emotions run high. The murder victim's family sits just inches from the killer. We'd like to put some... <laughs> goes on the attack. He wants revenge for his mother's murder. Cameraman Mike Hines ducks for cover, but keeps rolling tape. People started to run, yelling, screaming. First thing I thought, did she, my God, did someone have a gun? Security officers rush the defendant from the courtroom. But the fighting continues. The defendant's sister turns the tables and begins beating the attacker. Total chaos. Officers demand the courtroom be cleared pronto. Take another look. The attack catches everyone but the defendant by surprise. He lunged over at him. He just missed him. Um, I think if he would have hit him, he would have knocked him out and he wouldn't have been able to move and, and he might have might have killed him. Thanks to the quick hands of officers, the brawl is quickly brought under control, and no one is seriously hurt. Expect an eyeful. This is real TV. Cars scream into the first turn at a Formula 2 race in Britain. At these speeds, when things go bad, they go very bad. Once again, in slow motion, that's 3,000 pounds of race cars somersaulting through the air. The car rolls five times. Surviving this crash will require a miracle. But look! Incredible, driver Manfred Winkelhock walks away from the wreckage without a scratch. When the record light goes on, Real TV is off and running. A Shreveport, Louisiana mother and two children are trapped in a house on fire. They've been pushed by smoke and flames to the edge of a second floor balcony. Panic sets in. her neighbors to catch the children. The mother dangles, then drops the baby off the balcony into the neighbor's waiting arms. The baby's sister isn't so lucky. She pleads with her mother not to let go and tries desperately to hold on to her skirt. When she falls, it's straight to the ground. Neighbors rush to help her, but her mother, still on the balcony, is frantic. She begins to climb over the railing, ready to jump. The men below give her another way out, and she drops to safety using a garden hose. I, I threw my baby down first, my good girl, and then my other girl 
girl, she didn't want to, I, I told her I was going to throw her down, but she didn't want, she didn't want to jump, so she, she fell and got hurt a little bit. Oh. Thankfully, the little girl suffers only minor injuries in the fall, and that means this family survives a very close call. You're watching Real TV. If you thought jumping out of a plane was challenging, welcome to the sport of pond swooping. A home video camera rolls at the annual pond swooping meet in Poughkeepsie, New York. Watch as these extreme skydivers put a new twist on an old sport. Divers make a sharp turn just seconds before landing, which allows them to swoop inches over their target and skim across the pond. Swoopers are judged on accuracy, speed, and distance. Nice. Some do it with precision. Some don't. But this video is proof they all know how to keep cool on these hot summer days. Of all the things that we have seen on this show, that looks like the most fun. It also looks like something that I might try. Maybe not. I'm going to have more from those guys, though, a little later in the show. Still to come, the tennis match where the score is 14,000 to 1. Plus a one in a million sight. An underwater volcano erupts right before your eyes. There's more great tape coming right up. On Real TV. Where else? Welcome back. In our next collection of tape, fires are igniting in the strangest of places. In Indonesia, local sportsmen have fun with flames. It's a soccer match with a twist. The ball is on fire. In Devonshire, England, fire is also a big part of a yearly celebration. and sprint with flaming tar barrels on their backs. At these races, not even the spectators are safe. This is Daytona Beach. And this is Jesse, the human bomb. Tuck it away. It's quite a stunt. But something's wrong. It doesn't look like he's getting up. From Real TV's exclusive second angle, you can see the force of the explosion. There's a tense moment. Not only does Jesse survive, he's back doing what he loves. Playing with fire. Continuous, non-stop, video, back-to-back. -back. You're watching Real TV. Off the coast of Baja, Mexico, marine life enthusiast Tom Mitchell enjoys a rare sight. I'm not getting too close, are we? It's a whale shark, the largest fish in the world. But this peaceful scene doesn't last long. Killer whales attack the mammoth shark. They had a plan. They knew exactly what they were doing. You had one killer whale coming from this side. The first thing that goes through my mind was, this isn't Shamu. It's no contest. The whale shark is a gentle giant. Its teeth are used for filtering plankton, not for fighting. In minutes, 
it's over. It is a brutal attack, but Tom Mitchell sees more than just violence. This was nature, and uh, it was pretty exciting to see nature really doing what it does. Let me make this clear. I have nothing against whales or sharks, but that wasn't a fair fight. It was two killer orcas against one poor whale shark. You know, whale sharks, they only have little teeny bitty teeth. Anyway, let's move back on land. And something you've never seen from the polite, well-mannered world of championship tennis. Santiago, Chile. The national tennis team takes on Argentina. At stake, the Davis Cup and national pride. Things are already tense. Now, a controversial call sets the crowd off. An official tries to get the crowd to calm down. No way. It starts raining coins, bottles, and fruit. Some use chairs as umbrellas. And the players are to book the fray. The Argentine tennis team is escorted off the court by police while the riot rages. The Argentine player's father ends up with 10 stitches in his head. The Argentinians withdraw. Ultimately, both teams are kicked out of Davis Cup competition for the year. Coming up, it's 24 hours of hell at the hands of a 17-year-old boy. But cops are gonna stop the clock on his busload of terror. And here's a jump that probably won't make it into the record books. Ahmad's coming right back with more Caught on Tape, so don't go away. This is America's number one source for the wildest shot ever caught on tape. This is Real TV. Geologists off the coast of Australia investigate reports of an underwater volcano. They think they'll have to go below the surface to see it. They're wrong. The team is stunned as the volcano erupts right before their eyes. There's a little stuff coming up. Ooh. A crewman tries to keep his video camera steady and catches it all on tape. Molten ash and steam spew 200 feet into the air. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. That's the best one I've photographed. Geologist Brent McGinnis and his team are hypnotized by its beauty, but humbled by its power. We were always uh, at one hand on the throttle and one hand on the steering wheel. We were able to approach it close enough to get a, a good study of it, yet far enough to be safe. Oh, that was a big thing. But the team gets close enough to bring back some rock samples and document one of Mother Nature's most violent and beautiful creations. Now we take you to a hostage situation in Japan. The thing drags on for so long, it's just about guaranteed not to end peacefully. Twenty people are held hostage on a speeding bus near Hiroshima, Japan. Inside, a 17-year-old metal patient holds the driver at night point. Cops block the road using another bus, forcing the hijacked coach onto an off -man. As the bus slows, one passenger escapes the chaos by jumping out a rear window. But the blockade fails, and the bus rolls on. By nightfall, the bus stops and refuels at a gas station. Inside the coach, the mentally unstable teen wields a butcher knife and threatens to kill, saying he'll attack the young girl sitting next to him if anyone makes a wrong move. The standoff lasts throughout the night. At 
5.30 in the morning, police have had enough and decide to make their move. As one cop talks to the hijacker from a front window, a SWAT team sneaks into position. from the bus holding the butcher knife. Then the driver fights his way out the front door. Just moments later, the cops capture the hijack. Immediately, he's arrested and taken to jail. The hostages are shaken and some are checked for minor injuries. But this man and the other passengers escape the 24 hours of terror with their lives. Friend, you're watching Real TV on Real TV. Where else? Before we go today, we're going to show you a guy whose name I love, Spanky Spangler. Spanky's going to try something for us that he probably shouldn't. Spanky, good luck to you, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Spanky Spangler. Stuckman Spanky Spangler has never broken a bone. Here he comes. He's going for it. tries making light of the situation. He has no idea. Spanky's seriously hurt. Let's see if he's okay and then we'll watch a replay when we get him out of the car. But Spanky's not going anywhere soon. Real TV found this second man. Spanky clears 10 cars, but overshoots the catch ramp. Landing nose first doesn't help things. It sends him tumbling straight into trouble. It's his right leg that he uh, cannot move. His leg is broken and his knee is shattered. Spanky tells Real TV the truth behind his actions. Why not? Having my seat belt the way it should have been properly done, which we always do, uh, that was that was my fault and my mistake and had to pay for it. Had he tightened his seat belt a bit more, Spanky believes he would have walked away from the stunt free and clear. Okay, how about that? So from now on, I think I call him a Spunky Spanky Spangler. Try saying that three times fast. Try saying it once fast. Earlier today, we showed you those pond swoopers. Let's go back for some more swooping. So long, everybody.